Venomous Duck Media presents Gareth and the Lost Island Episode 8 The Jungles of Chimia Part 2 Disclaimer This audio drama should be considered rated PG-13 for discussions of sexual hijinks, drinking, consuming questionable potions, brief moments of violence, crude language, and even cruder humour. Please use caution when listening in public, as this story may cause audible laughter. Venomous Duck Media is not liable for any strained abdominal muscles you may receive while listening, or the strange looks you might get from other commuters. If laughter persists for more than four hours, seek immediate medical attention. There you go, lad. Are you all right? I am uncertain, short doctor. Perhaps you can help me determine if I am hallucinating or not. Is purple magic crawling all over the angry-looking professor's black staff? What happened? Where am I? The sky is black with only a handful of stars instead of thousands. Are the stars getting closer? Wait. Those aren't stars. It's light surrounding people. People with ears like mine. <laughs> Dozens of them. <laughs> you. I've seen you before. Well, at least your statue in a sunken temple. You're the one I got the rod from. Odd. <laughs> of course he looks odd. Styles change over the years. Trust me, I should know. Who are you? They call me the Smith, and you seem to recognize the one we call the Guardian. Ah, but where are my manners? <laughs> Congratulations on mastering the Tashun meditation techniques, young man. The what? Where am I? Uh, perhaps over the years, the name of the techniques I developed have come to be known by something different. As for where you are, I would think that would be fairly obvious, considering you just spent two days fasting and meditating to get here. Hold, old one. I do not believe he knows of what you speak. Exactly. I haven't a clue as to what you're going on about. Like I said, I don't even know where here is. The Void Rod, boy! You must have meditated and fasted in order to get your consciousness to enter the weapon! Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me we're inside that Black Rod? Where else would we be? What did you think the fasting and meditation was for in the first place? Again, I say hope. From his answers and obvious confusion. Our new brother did not partake in the usual ceremony to join with the Void Rod. Then how else do you explain? What is the last thing you remember, brother? Izzy, that bastard is threatening to kill her. I have to go back and help her. Hmm. Perhaps righteous anger? Fueled by the love for another. Yes, I suppose that could work. But it would require truly tremendous magical powers to do that. I'm talking about magical strength on the level of the Mintos. You make a very good point. Perhaps instead... My name is Gareth Mintel. Well met, my lord. It makes my old dead heart swell with pride to know that one of the void rods I fashioned is being wielded by a mental once again. My lord, this Izzy, is she your life mate? Uh, no? Is it your desire that she become so? I, honestly, I can't imagine a future without Izzy in it. I want to stand by her side for the rest of my life. 
So be it. You know what will happen if you go through with this, don't you? Do not try and stop me, Smith. I swore to protect the Mintel family in life and beyond. This includes their mates. I will fulfill my oath, old one. What are you two talking about? I'm going to give you that which you will need to save the next Lady Mintel. By my own free will, I give unto thee my strength and knowledge. May you use them to protect those whom I no longer can. Now prepare yourself, my lord. This will hurt. What? Where did he go? What just happened? All that he was now resides within you. You have been given a great gift, young Lord Mintel. One that very few of our people have ever been granted. Use it well, and kick those theses extruding orifices threatening the future Lady Mintel straight to the lowest level of the hells! Everything's starting to fade away. Wait, before you go, tell me, what are we? <laughs> Those who wield the Void Rod, of course. <gasps> I'm back! That scaled son of a politician is still threatening, is he? The Saver, let the magic of the Void Rod guide you. Where is he? Wait! Got it! What are you doing? Get down from the railing. You'll never survive a fall to the deck of the slaver airship from this far above it. Gareth, no! Don't! Gareth! What the hells? How did he survive that drop? His... his eyes are glowing purple. And he's wielding a black staff. No. It can't be. Those were just legends to scare hatchlings. Gentlemen, who wants to go first? <laughs> I ain't afraid of no silly glowing eyes. I'll gut you, boy. Who's next? Don't just stand there, you fools! Kill him! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how the professor did that jump, but I'll be damned if I let him fight to save Izzy alone. Henry! Tie the rope from the harpoon gun we salvaged to the top of the wheelhouse! Okay, Liz. Take careful aim and resist the urge to shoot the professor. He is helping to save Izzy, after all. Throw mechanical arm up over the rope and... Jump! First, a crazed guy with glowing eyes jumps out of the ship, and now a hideously figured chick with a mechanical arm drops down to. I should have listened to Ma, got a good job mucking stables. Oh god! Ooh. Mothers usually know best. Ah. Yield, and I'll let you live. I have a better offer. Kill them, and you'll get your pick of the next slave harvest. Ha <laughs> ha! Right. Now that's what I like to hear. I broke my last slave after I tied her to the cannon and... It's just like the stories from before the second great apocalypse. A demon with glowing purple eyes that can wipe out an entire raiding party single-handedly. Nice form, girl. Could be better, though. Oh, please. If you're so good, then step forward and prove it. Glad. Who knows? You might be good enough to make me break a sweat. <laughs> well, shit. He's actually as good as he says. I recognize his style, and I won't be able to beat him. Time to do something that would give my old fencing instructor a stroke. Lay the trap by lowering my sword for a strong upward swing, leaving myself completely open for an overhead slash. 
Tisk, tisk. Never drop your guard like that. Too bad you won't live to learn from your mistake. What? How? Metal hand, obviously. Let go of my sword, you bitch! You're going to scratch it! That's what you're worried about? Moron. My arm! You cut off my arm! Oh, gods. I did That's it. I didn't sign up for this. Watch out for the railing, you fool! Uh, oh. <sighs> Never mind. You've got no crew left to stop us. Let my sister go, or I'll see what our chef can do with fresh lizard meat. You'll have to cut through her first to get to me. Finally! I've been waiting all this time for him to pull me close to him as a shield. Okay, now just like Captain Dunning taught us, go weak in the knees, drop my weight, and pull him forward to keep a hold of me. What? And stand up explosively. <clears throat> That was for pilot. Follow up with a kick through the knee to drop him to the ground. That was for me. And this is for Tish. End with a kick to the head. Nice move, sis. Turn around so I can cut your ropes. Thanks! Gareth, why are your eyes glowing? Oh good, they're going back to normal now. I love your eyes. Now I just need to decide who to hug first. You or Liz? Uh huh? What? I... Oh, God. Those men. What did I. <laughs> well, I guess that makes your decision easier. <laughs> Come here, sis. Gareth, I've been looking for you all over the glorious dawn. I should have known you would be here sitting next to our cannon. Perhaps we should just hang a plaque that reads, Gareth's Brooding Spot. Looking for me? How can you even stand to be near me after you saw what I did to those slavers? Ow! What was that for? Now that I have your undivided attention, I'll answer your question with one of my own. Why wouldn't I want to spend time with you? You jumped off one airship and onto another that was full of slavers to save my life. No, don't turn away. Look at me, please. When we find Tish, and there are more of those bastards between her and us, will you let them hurt her, or will you destroy them like you did earlier? Keep in mind that those assholes are only going to give you these two options. I'll kill every damn one of them with my bare hands if it means keeping you two safe. And that's what's bothering me so much. I feel horrible about what I did, but I know why I would do it again, without hesitation. And that, Professor, is one of the many reasons why I fancy you. That and your adorable rear end. Really? <laughs> Quit turning around like that trying to see your own butt. You're going to make yourself dizzy. True, for the record. I'm quite fond of your terrier as well. <laughs> Is that so? Yes, ma'am. Mythical gods above and below. I have terrible timing. Yes. Yes, you do. Sorry, you two. But the captain wants to see us in her ready room to come up with a plan before we interrogate our prisoner. Rain check? Most definitely, my lady. Come on, you two lovebirds. Gareth? We need to hurry. I don't want Captain Scary to be mad at me. Trollis, head back and tell Elizabeth to meet us in the galley instead. I have an idea, but we'll need Henry's help to pull it off. I know that gleam in your eyes, lad. This is going to be good. I'll meet you two in the galley. What are we waiting for? I can't wait to hear what you came up with. This better be good, Professor. Henry. Would you and Chompers like to help interrogate the Scaled One? <laughs> Excellent. Good. Okay, grab Chompers, that meat turning fork, those melon ballers, a corkscrew, and that press thing over there. What's that for anyway? It's <laughs> called a garlic uh -huh. press. Garlic press? Huh. Learn something new every day. Trollus, we'll also need your spare medical bag. <laughs> 
done. Next, we need to move the galley table into the cargo hold, and then figure out how to make, and then rig up some restraints to attach to it. No need. I have a set of restraints in my cabin. You do? Why? They're for, um, reasons. Play your cards right, Professor, and you'll find out those reasons. Why am I in this pathetic cargo hold? Untie me, dwarf. Why the hells did I bother patching this poor sod up just for them to undo all my hard work? Shit! It's the purple demon, the mechanical devil, and the red-haired warrior. What the hells are they planning on doing to me? They even brought a chim with a doctor's bag who looks like the winter solstice holiday came early. Captain! I must formally object to what you are planning. As the ship's surgeon, this man is now my patient, and I am bound by my oath as a healer to do no harm. You are dismissed for the next hour or so, Doctor. After that, depending on what the prisoner is willing to tell us, we may have need of you again. That is, of course, if he lives. Right. Sorry, mate. She scares the living hells out of me. You're on your own. Henry, please check and make sure their strains won't get too tight. What happened last time was... Uh, distasteful. You should have used the safe word then. Captain, I'm gonna pull up a chair and chat with our new friend while he does that. Hello, my name is Professor Mental. What do you want, you hairless shim? What I want is to give you two options. The first is to cooperate and tell me what I want to know. The second is for you to not cooperate and force me to let my friend over there play with you for a while. And if you choose the second option, you'll be begging to tell us everything you know in order to make him stop. Is that it? Am I supposed to be scared of a hairless chim threatening to turn me over to his hairy cousin? Let me go now and I'll make sure you're all sold somewhere other than an ethereum mine. To be fair, and help you make an informed decision, I should probably tell you a little bit about my friend. Henry is a free chimp, born on IRD soil. His parents, however, were a different story. They were both former slaves who managed to escape from the labor camps near Skirth. They died early in Henry's life from the abuse they received at the hands of your kind, but not before telling him every single horror story of their time as slaves. Those stories led Henry to acquire a hobby that would be seen as odd at best and revolting at worst in polite society. What? He picks lice up of non-chims? Oh, well, nothing like that, I'm afraid. You see, Henry likes to torture scaled ones. I know as his friend, I should try to discourage him, but there's a sick sort of beauty watching an artist like him work. I mean, just look at the loving way he lays out his tools. <laughs> Ouch! Henry, when are you gonna learn to trust yourself when it comes to sharpening your tools? You poke your finger every time. Let's do the melon ball <laughs> guy next. He wants me to ask you if you know what size eyeballs you have. He what? Hey Henry, I don't think he knows the international eyeball sizes. Just use the small scoop and work your way up to the one that fits the best. Oh, Mr. Slaver Captain? What's the highest note you can reach when singing? Whatever it is, after Henry uses that press, it will most likely be higher. Stay. Stay. Good boy. What in the 34 layers of hell is that? That old thing? Uh, it's just the possessed skull of a temple guard who died sometime around the Second Great Apocalypse. Henry named it Chompers. You can probably guess what he uses it for on scaled ones. Like I said, you can either speak with me now, or Henry can get his playtime in, and then you'll speak with me. You have my word that if you cooperate, I won't let Henry near you. 
What do you want to know? Let's start with what you did with the human child who was aboard this ship. I knew we could get a heavy purse from selling the girl, unlike the rest of your crew. Um, no offense to the pretty redhead who ruined my knee. I want to keep the other one intact. Focus? Where's the girl now? The next shipment of slaves out of Chimia isn't due for another month. So she'll be at our camp. Considering it's our headquarters for operations in Chimia, you should probably just write her off as a loss and move on. There's no way you'll get out of the camp alive. Even if you do manage to figure out a way inside the most heavily defended outpost this side of the Sacred Sands. And why is that? The camp is in a box canyon with only one way in. It's guarded by sentries with rifles covering the entrance. And three of our dirigibles are moored to the cliff sides above the camp. The sentries will shoot anyone without the proper password, and the airships will decimate any airship other than ours that's foolhardy enough to fly into a blind canyon. Where will they be keeping the girl? She's probably being kept in the high-value cages at the rear of the camp. Not that it'll help you. There's no way you're getting in there. What's the password to get into the camp? I don't think so. If I give you the password, you will all get yourselves killed. I'll start to death on this horrible excuse for an airship. <sighs> Henry, make sure you floss chompers when you're done. Last time, he had a bit of scaled one stuck in his molars for a week before any of us noticed it. Wait, wait! The password is Lizard Strool Mammal Strool. You're kidding, right? It's not likely that I'm going to lie to you, knowing the punishment is being handed over to a psychotic chim and his possessed skull. I think he's telling the truth. He knows Henry would let Chompers loose on his groin if he lied to us. Be glad Professor Mintel convinced me to be polite. Had it been my choice, you would still be facing happy time with Henry with me handing him his instruments. Instead, I'm just going to have you thrown off my ship. Wait! He said you weren't going to kill me if I told you what you wanted to know. The professor said nothing of the sort. He said he wouldn't turn you over to our cook if you did what we asked. Sheldon, if you would please. I'll give you anything! I have money, and I can get you a great deal on some lightly used slaves! Wait, Sheldon! I really don't think we want to toss one of our chairs off the ship. That's not one of ours. We picked it up when we emptied the other ship's cargo hold. Oh! Carry on, then. My Mark says he bounces at least twice. You're on. For this high up, he'll splatter as soon as he hits the ground. No! 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 Huh? We're only five feet above a swamp, you twat. Unlike you worthless goat molesters, we only kill when we have to. Ugh. I recognize that smell. You do? Of course. Any good engineer would recognize the smell of naphtha. That gives me an idea. I think I know a way to take care of the other slaver airships. Oh, since we've been laying on this boulder in the rain, I'm soaked to the bone. What about you? Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm wetter than Elizabeth at a unit making ceremony. Oh, thanks. Now I'll be having nightmares for weeks. I really don't want to think about Captain Morgana getting wet, thinking about anything. Wish there were more of us going. Mm, me too. The problem is, we'll need the full crew running the Glorious Dawn to get us out of there when we're done. The trawl is what we need it to handle whatever casualties we incur. Huh? Look, the huh? trail is back. Yep. Those poor bastards patrolling seem to have a pretty set schedule. 
Too bad they don't seem to go very far from the only trail leading into the canyon. Any idea how to take care of them? Yeah, I do. I think you're really gonna like this. No, there's no way a scaled one commander will ever hear us making fun of his mother, you said. Even if he does hear, it's not like he's going to assign us a month straight of night parole duty, you said. Shut your trap. I think I see someone. Where? Oh, I see him now. You talking about that guy standing by the big builder? Yeah. It looks like he's waving at us to get our attention. Hey boys! Look what we got here! Well, the human <laughs> or not. Quick! Back behind the boulder! <laughs> this is going to be the most fun we've had all month. Beats the hells after counting raindrops! Let's go teach that uppity shimmer lesson! That was beautiful. See? I knew you'd enjoy yourself. Their wax cloaks even fit us. More or less. Um, sir, it looks like those two idiots who called the boss's mom a mammal lover are back early. If they're drunk or here to ask to be let in early again, I'm going to ask for the sentence to be doubled. Those... Hold up, one of them looks injured and is leaning against the other for support. What's going on down there? Open the bloody gates. My partner's hurt. You know the rules. What's the password? <sighs> Lizards rule, mammals drool. Oh, bugger and shit. That's an officer's password. They actually must have crashed somewhere in the jungle. Sorry, sir. We'll have that gate open at once. What are you doing just standing there? Open the damn gate before I bury my boot in your ass. Afterwards, Join me below. Follow me to the guard shack, sir. We'll get you out of the rain and see if we can do anything with that friend of yours. Sir, I'll send one of the boys to let the higher-ups know you've returned. No, I, I mean, thank you for the offer, but I want to make sure my friend's injuries are seen to first. Let's set him down in that chair over there. Let me help you, sir. <laughs> Gross! You smell like a wet ship! <laughs> Funny you should say that. Um, I don't get it. Did I miss a punchline or something? Talk about a straight line. <laughs> I don't smell that bad when I'm wet, do I? Of course not. You don't smell any worse than normal. Thanks. <laughs> Hey, wait. <laughs> Let's tie these two up. Excuse me, sirs. Do you want me to shut the gate or... Nice throw. I'll get Mr. Smashy for you. Ew, it's covered in blood and snot. You don't use this to cook with as well, do you? Now that I think about it, Probably better off not asking questions I don't want to answer. I'll tell you what, forget I said anything. Adding a bow, like you find on a present, was a really nice touch on those cards back there. Like I always say, Henry, you're a true artist. As miserable as this rain is, at least it's keeping most of the slavers inside the buildings. Come on. Sometimes I think fate really enjoys making things more difficult for me. It's like I'm just here for her amusement or something. Let's hurry. Find some cover near the sleigh pen while we wait for Izzy's distraction. Do you think her crazy plan will work? Of course I think her plan will work. I have trust in Izzy. Even if I have no idea how she's going to pull it off. You're just Aww. saying that. Would you want to make wild ape love to her? Which, as a trim, I totally endorse. No, I'm not saying that just because I fancy her. Izzy is a brilliant engineer. If anyone can figure out how to pilot two airships at the same time, from a single wheelhouse, she can. Look, there's the slaver dirigible towing the glorious dawn now. Meanwhile, in the wheelhouse of the glorious dawn, 
Let me use my mirror again to check our heading. Turn about four more degrees to starboard. Captain of the Glorious Dawn, remind me the next time your sister, the engineer, tells me to trust her. I should ask more questions. Sure. Hiding below the wheelhouse walls while steering another ship via some kind of bastardized marionette system isn't all it's cracked up to be, but come on, pilot. After this, your people can refer to you as <clears throat> the pilot who flew two airships at one time. Technically, Captain of the Glorious Dawn, I am only flying one ship at the moment. We are being towed by the dirigible. Killjoy, just stand by on the throttle. We're almost there. Is he? We're almost in range. Pilot is making the final course adjustments. Got it, Elizabeth. I'm pulling the string to start up the fireworks. Yeah. I really hope that match I glued to the sleever steam gauge stayed put. Once the engine reaches full steam, it should cause the gauge to strike the match. Then it will light the fuse we ran to their powder magazine and the barrels of naphtha that we set up on their deck. I hope so too. Otherwise, this is going to be a really short rescue mission. Okay, pilot, hold the string for their throttle. Their dirigible is going to run into the other slaver airships at full speed. Time to disconnect us. Kevin, if you do not release the connecting pin within the next few seconds, we will not be able to stop in time from entering the blast radius. What do you think I'm trying to do? The pin's stuck! Come on, you son of a politician! Work, damn you! Izzy, burn some ethereum so Pilot can stop us. We don't want to drift right into your surprise. Hey, Lizard how about you leave the engineering stuff to me? I already have some burning. Pilot can stop us whenever you want. Done. Sorry, Captain of the Glorious Dawn, but I did not feel I should wait for you to give the actual order. I think I can overlook it this time. Let's stand up and watch our handiwork. And you were worried. Sheldon, come on up and start firing the cannon into the buildings farthest from the slave pens. Let's sow as much confusion as we can. Gods know Henry and the Professor can use all the help they can get. Back on the ground in the slaver's camp. That's our cue. Get Tish. I'll watch your back. Oh, I've never been more glad to be stationed at the slave pens. In fact, while everyone's distracted, I might just treat myself with one of them pretties we've got lost. Oh! 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 Hey! Mr. Fuzzy Bottom! Hey, kiddo. We're busting you out of this joint. a lot of slavers. Okay, Rod, you probably aren't going to get out of this, but let's at least try to buy Henry and Teach time to get away. There are too many of them. You must use the four. Sorry, wrong story. The only way to save your friends is to fully surrender yourself to the magic of the Void Rod. For what it's worth, I'm sorry, Lord Mintel. No one should have to do what we're about to. <laughs> Welcome to the last moments of your lives. Gods and her wizards. He doesn't have any eyes. Just purple flames where they should be. Oh, seriously, Mr. Fuzzy Bottom? You're covering my eyes? You know where I'm from. Oh, wow! Gareth is tearing through those oozers! Hit that one again, Gareth! He was extra creepy! Oh, that looks like that hurt! Oh, well, not anymore, 
years since I'm pretty sure necks aren't supposed to bend like that. <laughs> but still. Oh, I've heard older kids use that phrase, but I didn't think it was anatomically possible. Yeah, that is never coming out of Garrus' clothes. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else is still alive. At least, these dirty men dead. It's easy as somewhat slaughtering chickens. That's, that's not a man. It's a demon. Shrapnel went through his arm. No blood. Just more of that purple fire. And that, that, that wound just healed as if he had never been injured at all. I, I have to find somewhere to hide. Before, before those pools of purple fire look my way again. Maybe I could pull myself over to that pile of debris. Before it... Oh, oh gods. Oh gods, he sees me. Who else is running to their death? Got yeah. Oh, hi, Henry. Uh. Do you think I can get Gareth to teach me how to do that? This has been Gareth and the Lost Island. Episode 8, starring Peter McGiffin as the narrator and Henry's translator, Alan Petty as Trialness Granite Star, Patrick Mallard as Gareth Mantell, Deborah Mallard as Izzy Morgana, Lauren Kong as Elizabeth Morgana, Jenna Oliver as Tish, Casey Swan as Pilot. Lawrence Sterling Knott as the Slaver Captain, Jed Gillimack as the Void Guardian, Alex Wood as the Void Smith, Ted Garman as the Swordmaster and Head Guard, Daniel Four as Sheldon's Left Eye Stalk, OJ VA as Sheldon's Right Eye Stalk, and Last Surviving Slaver, featuring OJ VA. Peter McGiffin and Patrick Mellard as the slavers. Venomous Duck Media does not endorse torturing prisoners for information unless the one performing the torture is a chim humming the Swedish chef song. If that's the case, pass us the popcorn. Gareth and the Lost Island was written and directed by Patrick Mellard.